Hey everyone! Welcome to part two of my video essay series, Living with Autism. Hopefully the following information will prove helpful to you, whether it be a comfort to people on the autism spectrum or an eye-opener for people who aren't. Let's dive in. Here's the problem with trying to explain my own autistic habits. I'm just going to start off uh, here before I go any further with other topics. It actually takes a long time to figure out exactly the right way to explain them, these habits. I'm currently working on a book about my experiences on the spectrum to expand on my thoughts a little more, but, this, but since this is supposed to be a series made up of short videos, I'll have to summarize a lot, of what I, uh, a lot of what I talk about. For this one in particular, I'd like to talk about my overcrowded mind and my obsessive behavior and how the two are connected. Yes, those don't exactly sound simple and they don't exactly sound summary worthy either, but I like the way I have been able to sum these up, and people have given me positive feedback about these. So without further ado, let's dive into these. I spend so much time in my head, whether I like it or not, that I lose focus of my real surroundings. It's a wonder that I'm not dead yet, and it becomes difficult to pay attention and listen when I have to. One of the most common phrases I've said in the past is, I forgot, because it's very common for me to forget things. There are two different ways my mind can run. My mind will either have the same image, playing itself over and over again, while I'm actually thinking about something else entirely or something similar, or my mind will race through dozens of different images, like rapidly flipping through TV channels, the way we used to do it when we were kids, while I'm talking to myself or someone else about something entirely different. So think of it this way. I will be, imagine, I will be thinking about something and those will be visuals. But then sometimes I'll be thinking about something else entirely different at the exact same time, and those thoughts are translated into text. So you've got one opposite thought from a visual standpoint, and then you've got another thought in the form of text. Most of the visual images that I mentioned are usually photographic memories of my absolute favorite movies and TV or web shows. So for anyone who knows me personally, know that when I'm talking to you about something, I'm actually visualizing something completely different, or perhaps similar only in the slightest, which runs the risk of me being distracted or zoning out to sink back into my thoughts again. When I sink into my thoughts and zone out, my hand normally automatically goes into my, into my ear, and I usually like fondle it or play with it. Uh, it's an obsessive habit I've had for as long as I can remember, and today I relate it as an obsessive habit I have when I'm lost in my own head. As a matter of fact, no joke, I'm doing it right now. And the crazy part about the constant visual loops? I never get tired of them. I have some of the same exact images uh, playing themselves over and over in my head for a week, and I never start to feel hostile or sick and tired of those images. It's possible that I get used to it. Another thing about my visual thoughts I've noticed is that when I'm recalling a memory of a past event, I also end up thinking about the visuals that were running through my head at the time that the event or time was occurring. For instance, to throw out an example there, a couple of years ago, my family spent an entire month doing a complete media fast, basically a complete break from technology, such as TV or entertainment on a computer or video games or any of those types of things that can relate to media. I remember the visual thoughts about the first Hobbit movie that were running through my head at the time. At the time, I had just recently seen that movie several times and had fallen in love with it, so the memory of it was flying around in my head a lot in the repeated visuals phase. Here are a few things to add regarding my overcrowded mind that I feel are very important to mention. These will be quick and hopefully uh, you will be able to understand them too. So number one is obsessive tendencies. I have obsessive tendencies. I go back and rewatch favorite scenes in movies, show episodes, and favorite YouTube videos, and still feel the same level of excitement each time. I either go back to analyze certain aspects of the scenes, or sometimes just rewatch funny YouTube video clips to laugh again. I also have the tendency to listen to the same song over and over again, although that's, that's a trait that a lot of people, even people who aren't on the spectrum, tend to have. Number two, overthinking it. A lot of times when people have told me to not overthink something, I usually respond by saying, 
too late, because it really is too late. My mind may be overcrowded to the point that it's suffocating, but it collects information instantly if I'm listening, or care, and it goes through the endless cycle of being thought about and analyzed and pulled apart, and when there's nothing else about it left to analyze, it just thinks about what's already been analyzed. Basically, it just goes over the exact same information again. So with all that being said, Despite my simple outward appearance, if you were to open my head and take a look inside my mind, it might be more than enough to make you pass out. It's complicated and it's even messy at times. But at the same time, it's the mind I was created to have, with a certain level of depth that even I can't understand, even though it's mine. So thank you guys for watching this and listening to my rant. I was delighted when one of my managers at work told me that he had actually watched part one and liked what I had to say. There's a real comforting quality to making these videos, because I'm taking some of the best of what I've ever written and turning it into a new me medium for other people to find and experience. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I have no idea how many parts this series is going to have. Um, not yet, anyway. I've written a lot of articles on autism, and there's a good handful of them that are favorites of mine, and, and ones that I would love to turn into videos. So this is something I'm doing to test the waters a little bit and see where it goes. Either way, I hope, this, I hope that this series will cover everything I really want to cover, and I hope it continues to reach out to more people. So thanks again, and I will see you guys next week.